Are you happy, Haley? I wrote it. Just for you. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair, a warm smell of Kalitas rising up through the air. I just finished the Potter video last night and I've been so busy editing this month that I haven't had a chance yet to go to Disneyland and check out the Halloween overlay of Tower of Terror in complete darkness. Ooh. Well, I'm here with Dave in Hollywoodland. Uh, we're going to ride Tower of Terror at night, but uh, I can't find the Tower of Terror. Where is it? I don't I mean, know. If, if only it had some sort of sign. If there's one thing I know, it's that everything in Hollywood is labeled with big letters that say Hollywood. Yeah, we're clearly in Cleveland or something. Oh, well, let's go home. Literally the cheapest possible overlay. They just turn out all the lights. But probably an effective one, because it works on Space Mountain Ghost Galaxy. You know, eventually we'll get Guardians of the Ghost Galaxy for that Halloween overlay. Right. Oh, well, we've been in line for 70 minutes, so I don't want any more surprises. I certainly hope this will be a most common elevator. I just want to go in there, stand up, and be moved up and down to get to a room. That's all I'm asking. They for. don't deliver you directly to the rooms. They direct the, deliver to, you to, to the a floor, hallway. Yeah. To the floor where the room is. Yeah. Yes. Where I will then walk down a hallway, check into my room. I've got all my. You luggage didn't already here. check it. You're <laughs> supposed to do that in the lobby. Or un un unlock. They you don't have a bellhop for each room, Dave. Damn it! I gotta go downstairs again. Ah, well. Some jerk with a camera here, and I am here with Spaz Master and Trickster Bell, and we are about to ride this for one of the last times ever. The first time that we've rode it together, ever. You can do this. I'm just here for moral support. You know, Charlie, barely anyone dies on this ride. Barely anyone. That waiver they make you sign, it's just a formality, really, more and than you anything know, you else. You don't even feel the G-force if you just, like, wedge your feet against the floor in front of you. Yes, you don't feel the Jerry Bruckheimer hamster movie at all. They make you watch it, just a few minutes, just kind of a test screening, even though the movie came out seven years ago, they're still... They just want to make sure. They only make you join ISIS on a trial period. It's not... <laughs> Okay, Charlotte boy. Do I have a burst blood vessel? Right no, nope. I Does might have smudged my lipstick on your face. <laughs> you just rode the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror with your goodly wife, Haley, for the first and I'm guessing last time ever. I'm proud of you for doing it. It's still a wonderful exercise in anticipation. I love the build up in this ride. You know, I look forward to Guardians of the Galaxy, but this really does hold up. And down. And down. I thought they only did this for Halloween, I but apparently really Halloween but apparently too, they're but... still doing it till it closes. After dark, they run the ride in pitch darkness. No lighting or um They still have some of the voiceover. Some of the voiceover, but no lighting or uh, or sound effects. That sounds terrifying. I was sitting in the Hollywood Hawaiian we all just rode the uh, Tower of Terror at DCA for the very last time. We rode it at night with the last chance to check in thing. It's all dark, but some of the house lighting is still kind of visible, so you can sort of see like the plants and stuff. And that really felt like you were in an abandoned building to me. It felt like I was in an episode of Ghost Adventures. It's so quiet. You can hear like the machinery be like... That is also you. very and it's super unsettling. There was an actual audible like, aww, in our car because we think it's shut down <laughs> and then and it drops you and then it drops you yeah there's that moment of delay you're so familiar with tower of terror and you're like oh yeah that we're gonna drop now so i even like pre-screamed a little bit like i always do and then we waited and it was way scarier than tower of terror has ever been because there's so much dead silence where you might pre-scream as a joke and then it's like oh we got another 10 seconds we're just sitting here <laughs> awkwardly knowing that you pre-screamed. Oh, well, 
<laughs> yes, everyone else is just sitting in my pre-screen then. Premature exclamation. Yes, premature exclamation indeed, Nick. When you see Disneyland, it's all lit up with lights. Yeah. So there's this juxtaposition of this terrifying darkness, and then suddenly it's like, wow, pretty Christmas lights. This is a great <laughs> view. And then they drop you again. It's almost like they give you a glimmer of hope, yeah. like in a horror movie, and then they snatch it away. I think it would be a good idea for Disney to do as a seasonal Halloween event to do late check-in in Florida. Yes. Since since that's the tower that's staying open just for Halloween. I didn't ride, but I took a survey. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I did, my, I did my civic duty. I would be very, very angry if they weren't replacing it with anything. If they were just like shuttering it or making it you know, seasonal only. But the fact that they are, and, and not just replacing it, but replacing it very quickly with, you know, a whole new type of, the first Marvel ride is really exciting to me. So, you know, it's bittersweet. I'm getting all misty-eyed over, the, over the damn tower, of the damn Twilight Zone oh, ride. Right. You've Thank taken you. a survey. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a survey. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just seeing a tree, guys. Smiling and I need your help. The Collector has trapped my friends, the Guardians of the Galaxy, in his weird freak show. Check it out. This is the joint we're in. Behold, we has a show building. I think it looks really awesome in person. I was a little worried from the photographs. I thought they looked a bit too shiny, happy candy factory to me, but in person, maybe it's just because it's overcast and it's not like direct sunlight, but I think it looks really nifty. From outside the park, from the Esplanade or, or Disneyland, I, I don't think you can see it from Disneyland Park, but from between the two parks, it definitely beckons you in a lot more than the Tower of Terror did because if you didn't know that the Tower of Terror was a ride, you probably would just think it was another hotel. You'd probably think, oh, there's a there's a hotel on, uh, on Harbor Boulevard that people can stay at. It wouldn't necessarily beckon you into the park as its own ride, and this absolutely does. The work walls haven't come down yet. Uh, in fact, as I understand it, they're not even doing cast member previews until like a week before uh, the grand opening, which is really cutting it close. They built this in an impressive amount of time. It really did. It really is a rush job. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they've done it right by just hiring more and more people to do the manual labor. I actually really like the exterior. I was always a fan of classic retro sci-fi. The collector likes what a tacky, tacky billionaire would love and that really goes with it. It's Space Egypt, and I really like it. <laughs> it's like Metropolis meets that kind of Edwardian fascination with Egypt after they discover King Tutankhamun's tomb. And so it, it makes it look archaic and futuristic at the same time, and I like it. Is it not problematic? Because that comes from a, that comes from a time where Egypt was considered alien. <laughs> yes. But everything is problematic. Indeed, it is. The aliens yes, built yes. the pyramids, this is the proof. So this is a Stargate ride all along? They reveal that there's going to be six different scenarios on Guardians Mission Breakout and six different songs. Of the six songs they'll be using, only one was actually on an awesome mix, and that was I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. The other five are uh, Free Ride, Born to be Wild, Burning Love, Hit Me With Your Best Shot, and Give Up the Funk. Almost all of which are really great songs, but the, the, the cool thing about Awesome Mix is that it was a little more esoteric. It was a mix between big hits and, you know, slightly lesser known hits, like, you know, Cherry Bomb by The Runaways and stuff like that. These six songs that they've chosen for this ride feel like they just turned on a classic rock station and jotted down the first six songs they heard. So, I mean, I can't be the only one who's sick to death of Born to be Wild, can I? But what do you, the average Disneyland tourist, Yes, yes, we... Oh, man. I got that too excited for it. I pretty much want the old Terror Terror back. She's oh. a purist, yeah. Aww.
Um, I went on it for the last time, and I do not like the outside design. I do like the inside design, but after seeing it a couple times, I find it a little bit creepy. I'm a roller coaster phobic. I hate those wild rides, so I did not go on the Tower of Terror until the last day it was open, <laughs> and I loved it. I thought it was great. So I'm not as attached to it as, say, my sister is who went on it all the time. I think every one of us here would love to live in a world where this coast could have both Guardians of the Galaxy and Tower of Terror. Yeah, just as I'd like there to be a park where Back to the Future and The Simpsons can coexist exactly, peacefully. Exactly. In the Thor Ragnarok trailer, someone pointed this out, in the first shot of Jeff Goldblum, about a minute into the trailer, you can see out of focus over his right shoulder, camera left, that. The, really? the Mission Breakout show building. Disney can't sue itself. Drop it. <laughs> you go to the suburbs of, of, yeah. of, the pla of some planet in the galaxy and they, every, they house, all look like every that. house looks like this. And I especially look forward to the theming is love, theming is life people getting even more butthurt. So, yay! Because as my grandfather used to say, if you're butthurt, then I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Work walls are down, but it's all fenced at the moment. Joe Rody's giving a tour in there. Joe Rody? Yeah. Beer keys? I'm here to tell you about this exciting new addition to Disney California Adventure. Somewhere in there, Joe Rody is giving a tour of the building. Look, I've lived my whole life as an Imagineer groupie waiting for this moment. Well, it's a Marvel ride, so Rody's gonna just be replaced by Don Cheadle. That was him, guys. That was the guy who wanted to build Beastly Kingdom. I should get him to sign these. So I guess the DC park would be Hero Down. Hero's Down. Aww. Why did you say that phrase? I'm noticing a weird lack of Iron Man. Huh. Like, because they've got Spider-Man and they've got Captain America. And, you know, Captain America is weird because they, you can still see his face through the mask. It's totally Chris Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Looks more like Chris Pine. Iron Man and Captain America just had a civil war last oh. year, remember? So... So right. doesn't, it doesn't explain why Spider-Man's here. They are bitter exes. Totally not becoming Marvel Land. Because it's, this is all temporary, right? Right? Well, who cares if it's not? I mean, who really cares about preserving Diet Disney Hollywood Studios? The sailor say, Brandon, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. The implication is that Rocket basically graffitied Breakout on that sign. But then that would mean the official sign was first time on display, Guardians of the Galaxy, mission, colon, and then blank. Well, here's what happened. I noticed that there's missing letters from like first time on display. Oh, the okay. Missing spell out mission. And that's oh, like, okay. And that's mission is all lumpy. That is really clever. See, now if I was a certain stripe of Disney fanboy, I would have just dismissed that sight unseen without even thinking about how clever it was. And then once I was finally corrected, I would go, eh, well, it's still stupid. It's almost like this park appeals to children or something who haven't figured out how to be creatively cognizant yet. The show's mine now. All right, you know what? Forget about the Guardians of the Galaxy ruining Hollywood land. Look, the X-Men were here first. You racist motherfucker. X-People. It's not X-Men, X there's X-People. are people. dead. You XJWs. <laughs> Our friend Ian here is a cast member, and he got to go on this thing today because they're doing a, a very strictly cast member-only previews. So he did not have any plus ones, I, as I understand it. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much, unfortunately. Much less plus five of us. All right, Inside Man, tell us how it is. Ooga fucking shock up, bro. <laughs> 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 That's all I gotta say. All right. That's all I can say. As a replacement to Tower of Terror, it succeeds. As a star to Marvel Land, it works even better. In terms of its pre-show, like a Universal attraction, it can be a little reliant on screens, but that was kind of expected to me, but it's all the environment that helps all the more. If you're a Marvel nerd, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Nice. You're gonna see a lot of Easter eggs and all that good stuff. People are gonna complain for the next few weeks, like saying, oh, look at this, it's Steampunk Tower Tear. How could they ruin such a great attraction? But in the long run, they know what they're doing. So honestly, for a first step, again, towards Marvel Land, it's the best step that we could possibly be taking right now. We need you to help us break out. Got it? Good. Now move it. Uh, I gotta go.
everybody, it is Wednesday, May 31st, 2017, and today is the day we are finally going to get to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. And by we, I mean me and Dave and Zach holding the camera right now. This is the standby line. The park is not officially opened yet. And over there is Dave waiting in the fast pass line. He has my pass. I hope he will give it back someday. As I'm sure you're aware, there are six different variants. I don't think we'll be able to ride all six of them today, because uh, I think they're randomized. And because of this. Yeah, because of all the people. Hopefully at least two or three times, and maybe get half or at least a third of the different variants. Um, and then maybe come back next week, and the week after, and the week after, until we finally ride them all, and I can give you my review and opinion on all of them. So yeah, it's taken me 13 years, but I'm finally going to ride the Tower of Terror today. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm such a huge Twilight Zone fan, man. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. The partner statue is not what I remember. You can't live behind. So we just rode it once. We've got fast passes and we're in line to get another fast pass. Yard no sponsored by Travelocity. <laughs> There's the Nomeo and Juliet ride in its entirety. <laughs> you, know, you got something right. Oh, is it a twig? You, know, you, you, got, see. you got a growth on you. You got a growth, oh, okay. a growth on you. Oh, I keep them in their plastic and their special bubble wrap And I never even open peel back Unsnap! Alphabetical and ordered in their perfect numbered clay I am not the daughter of Sam! Every boy from every childhood in a locked case This group, I swear, is like a painting No matter where you are in the room is looking at you Do you have that on loan from the mansion? Collector comes, the collector buys And the kids who wait get a rude surprise It isn't for the joy of the toys Expect the collector to be there Just to collect Just to collect I got the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout comic And on the very first page The first thing it says is Black Sheep, Scoundrels, and Weirdos, Peter Quill, and so it opens with a Pirates reference. Black <laughs> Sheep, Scoundrels, Near to Well Cats. We just rode Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout uh, for the second time. First time we rode, we got Burn in Love. Second time we rode, we got Hit Me With Your Best Shot. So instead of the hotel lobby, we now have the Collector's Collection Room, where we see a big screen where they're showing the Guardians being held captive. Uh, with a multi-camera sitcom setup. I don't know why Tavon bothered to go to those extremes. You turn your head and there's another Easter egg somewhere. You've got an Adam Warlock cocoon. You've got a uh, Mass of, of the Dark Elves from Thor 2. You've got stuff that I think even goes back to Namor the Submariner. you got the hammer that, that's supposed to belong to Beta Ray Bill, the original Yeti from yeah, Matterhorn. Yeah, the, the, the Matterhorn Yeti. There's an octopus from Country Bears. Figment is in the ride. In my headcanon, it's the original Figment, and that's why they had to change the ride, is because Tana Lear kidnapped him, and they had to make a new one out of Dreamfinder's imagination. It, honestly, but then they killed him because he knew too much or something. I don't know. I haven't been back to Florida in a while, so I don't know, but it's probably the same exact Figment model that was on display at One Man's Dream when we were shooting probably, the Epcot probably. video. And they replaced the beloved Journey into Imagination ride with something neither beloved, nor a journey, nor imaginative, and barely a ride. I didn't see any explicit Tower of Terror references in this ride. I that, yeah. If you go to the right hallway, into the right library, you're going to have to find a bellhop cap and a Tower of Terror, a Hollywood Tower Hotel bookmark. On the uh, platform where Harold and the Octopus are, there's a painting that used to be in the lobby. On the lower level, there's that old dragon statue from the lobby that's uh. hidden away as a collector's item. See, I just figured that somewhere in his collection, he should have just had the frozen corpse of Rod Serling. Well, of course, you know, the aliens got them onto the ship, and then he found out it was a cookbook, so... Yeah. Stan Lee makes a cameo in the pre-show yeah. film, which, of course, he is. You know, why wouldn't he? Chris Pratt is, uh... I don't know if they did more than one take with him. Oh man, they got my name wrong. It's not Peter Quill. It's Star-Lord. But they did not get Vin Diesel the voice Groot. They got a very obviously not Vin Diesel yeah, the voice Yeah, it would seem like that would be an easy voice to replicate, especially since they're pitching it up anyway. I am Groot. I am Groot. 
So then you're led into the former library of the Hollywood Tower Hotel, which is now uh, the collector's private office. Where His public private office. Yeah. On the collector's list, he has, you know, the characters' names and how much they're worth. Because, like, you know, Gamora and Drax, um, they're both, like, worth, like, a million units. Three the Destroyer, like, 999,999 units. Poor Peter's only worth 45. And then the rocket animatronic pops up. What? Of course I escaped! This is why I always say to wait until you ride the ride before you judge, because what is it that theme park fans are always complaining about these days, not enough animatronics. We've lost the art of animatronics because everything's just on screen now. Well, guess what? Rocket's not on screen in that scene. He is an animatronic, and he's one of the best ones they've ever made. That's already infinitely more physical effects than Tower of Terror had. Tower of Terror had physical sets, but all of the effects were screens and projections. Remember that uh, first State of the Parks I did where I predicted what the ride storyline would be? I was completely wrong. <laughs> I didn't get a single thing right that I didn't read somewhere else. They don't try to blast you out of the building. You're simply being lifted into another floor to see pieces of the collector's collection, and then Rocket shows up and screws with everything, and it's uh, it's it's so much fun. The fact that this ride uh, moves between scenes much more quickly, you know, cuts to the chase much more quickly, and bounces back and forth between the levels a lot more. Even though it's probably about the exact same length as the tower ride experience, it felt uh, more, it felt a little longer, it felt a little more complete, because there weren't those slow build moments that were just, you know, effective at creating suspense, but really just making you wait for the thing that happens to happen. Here, right away, things start happening. And instead of it being like that long, drawn-out monologue, you get the immediate fun of watching Rocket just rip stuff apart. This ride has the best use of audience participation of any second-person narrative ride ever. Universal rides always say, congratulations, you did it! You did it! <laughs> this ride was the first one where you actually did something. Raise your hands now for security bias, guys. Now wave them like you just don't care. It was something minimal, you're just raising your hands, but it actually had a legitimate backstory for why Rocket needs your help. My hands got scared! Yours too! It's brilliant. It, it makes sense in universe because Rocket doesn't have hands. It's something you literally have to do on the ride anyway when they're checking to make sure your seatbelt's on. That said, at the end of the ride, they also make fun of the fact, like you hear Drax saying, why are you thanking them? We're the, old, we're the ones who did all the fighting. So <laughs> they make fun of the theme park trope of you did it, while still doing a better you did it than most theme park rides do. I'm already declaring it that this is my favorite ride in DCA now. That this is, I, I will come back and ride this probably at least once a trip, assuming the line is not unbearably long. It's difficult to ride it without a giant smile on your face. If this had been what they built here to begin with, like if this had been the Radiator Springs Racers to uh, Tower of Terror's test track, I don't think anybody ever would have complained about this. I rode the Florida one first, and so riding this one afterwards is always, always a disappointment because you're always like, well, we get to go to... No, no we don't. That's right, that's in the other coast. It feels like what makes that tower work is what makes this tower work, and that is that it's the drop ride with visuals. Like, the drop ride is cool, but you can get that type of ride at like a carnival or a state fair. In fact, there's another Marvel drop ride yeah, in Florida. That's true. Swade said it best, in fact. Everyone's acting like their grandmother died when really she just moved to Florida. <laughs> People are upset that we lost the one scary ride in DCA, but I was upset when we lost the one funny attraction with Muppet Vision, so I'm glad to have a comedy ride back in this, in this area again. I'm not convinced yet that this was an upgrade from Tower of Terror. I actually, I actually think I'd still slightly prefer Tower of Terror. On its own, this ride is amazing. Definitely worth your time if the line isn't too long in the park. Or you know what, even if it is, don't believe the haters. Come down here, ride it yourself, but you're gonna already. I mean, the line's like three hours long already. So you're already in line. Everyone in the world, everyone in the universe is already in line for this. Even if you think you aren't, you still are. I am Groot. We are Groot. Step right up and take a look at a fool. Help me, I'm stuck on the ceiling. I don't like it. Stupid maker contract. And Ann B. Davis as Alice. Right by Mission Breakout, they put a physical cold tag. 
Marvel, you diabolical geniuses. I'd call it a post-credits tag, but rides don't have credits. Unless the gift shop count is counted as credits. Post-gift shop. But then it should be over there. You should be over there. Okay. <laughs> over there. Well, good. That's where you're supposed to be. I'm going to go over there now. That's not what I said to do at all. D23 is probably going to be our best bet when we get more info on this whole thing, but having this here is just, as a Marvel fanboy, this is awesome. You know what you need is like a, like a thumping sound coming out of it. So we just rode Mission Breakout for a third time. This time we got Give Up the Funk. I think riding it the third time, I pinpointed exactly why I still kind of consider this a downgrade from Tower, even, even the lesser Tower, which this was. And that is, I miss the build-up wow, once the ride starts. Even though it didn't make sense for an elevator to disconnect itself from, from its shaft and go backwards, you know, that was kind of part of the fun of it, just because, you know, it made it even more surreal and eerie. The ride was really good at sinisterly, if that's even a word, um, you know, teasing that you know the ride would drop, but you didn't quite know when. It was the same ride sequence of drops every time, and as such, eventually you came to learn that, uh, oh, this time it's opening for you is the cue for it to drop, but if you didn't know that already, it was a genuine surprise. There was something about the buildup of the Tower of Terror that really made it something special to me, and that's why much as I love this, I think I do still consider the original Tower the superior ride. I'll still have to ride the rest of them to make my final judgment, but yeah, that's kind of what's... That's kind of what I'm missing about Tower at this point. I get why this ride is the way it is. It fits better with Guardians of the Galaxy, but aesthetically, I think I just prefer the slow build a little more. On the other hand, it could definitely be argued that since the Tower of Terror already still exists in Florida, and we still have that slow build there, what's wrong with a little variety? I wish they had built the original Superior Tower of Terror here in the first place, I guess. Just because I'm a local Californian and I'm stupid and fat and greedy. In addition to, you know, the drop, you're also getting give up the funk, so you're getting like the tense of the drop and you're getting the fun of the song. That kind of dilutes the tension. I mean, I mean, how tense can any situation get if Parliament Funkadelic is playing? Even saying the words Parliament Funkadelic, how, how can you be tense hearing the... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I forgot your village was burned down by Funkadelics. A Parliament of Funkadelic specifically. Okay, I, I am tired of you. God, I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry I only skimmed your autobiography. There are honestly a lot of ways, uh, both good and a couple not so good, a lot of ways where this feels much more like a universal ride. I guess for lack of a better phrasing, it's such an attitude heavy ride that it uh, really feels like a universal ride except on a Disney budget. So I guess for a lot of people, this is gonna be like the dinosaur to Towers Indie, where like it's still good, but not as great as the one they really love. Not not for me though, because I love Indie even more than I love the Florida Tower, and this is way better than Dinosaur. Like objectively. It, it even has dinosaurs in it, so and you can actually see them, unlike dinosaur. unlike a dinosaur. I don't wish this hadn't been built. I'm glad this was built. I'm glad I get to experience it. I am I think it is a kick-ass ride. And I'm glad that DCA gets to have a comedy ride again. I just wish we didn't have to lose the dark, sinister ride to make it happen. On this coast, at least, Mansion is still in walking distance. Yeah, that is true. Okay, so we managed to ride this thing for a fourth time, and this time we got free ride. I take back what I said, that was better than Tower of Terror. <laughs> that might even be better than the Florida Tower of Terror. It was, like, that was genius. The gimmick of the free ride segment is that they play around with the gravity within the ride film. It's like, Groot accidentally pushes the anti-gravity button, which causes us to go into zero gravity mode on the ride, which, by the way, on every version of the ride we've been on, happens early and frequently. Yes. Like on Tower of Terror, it just happened the one time. This one, it happens like multiple times, and it's and I, I love that sensation. That was one of my favorite parts of the ride, so yeah, the more the better. And then, of course, he turns off the anti-gravity, and it plummets. I mean, that's just, that's just genius. I will miss being able to go on Tower of Terror whenever I want, but you know what? Better versions in Florida anyway. 
I am so glad we have this. Oh my god. I already said all my long-winded thoughts. I'm just like, yeah, good ride. I am giddy. I just turned into Luke Ski fanboy mode now. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a thing and I like it. I loved Tower of Terror more than anything. It was my son, my child. I can learn to like this. It's not no Rod Sterling, but like Paul Rudd will kind of do the trick and a pretty cool animatronic raccoon. I'm always down for that. Rod Sterling? Fake Rod Sterling. It was wow, you really time. loved the Tower of Terror. <laughs> I love that guy who created the Twilight Zone, Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider is introducing morality plays. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the only thing left to say is, uh, you know, Wonder button powers activate. <laughs> Form of a raccoon! Born to be wild. Due to a series of extremely fortunate circumstances, we actually got to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout a whopping five times today, which is really impressive given the massive crowds. And even more impressively, we got a different song each time. This particular time we got Born to be Wild. The use of Born to be Wild is very much a cliche at this point, I admit. But I still think sometimes it hits the spot. It's not exactly nails on a chalkboard for me, you know, it, it's not it's not party in the USA or anything, but it just kind of does nothing for me at this point. But you know what? It just helps me focus on the ride films more. And on the Born to be Wild one in particular, when it reaches the top and the doors open and there's Disneyland, Rocket says, Disneyland? That's thematically inconsistent. That might be my favorite joke in any, certainly any Disney ride ever. It's such a cool in joke for the theme park nerds, and particularly the theme park nerds who won't shut the hell up about theming. Theming is a nice garnish on theme parks, but I don't really think that it should be the be-all, end-all. It didn't fit theming for Disneyland to be seen out the window of a 1930s hotel, either. It's really hard to tell with rides like this which elements are actually connected to each other and which are just all at di different random roulette wheels. And that's the thrill of the hunt. One thing I noticed about the rocket animatronic is that it seems to be basically using the same technology as the Navi animatronic in Pandora. I look forward to seeing you on Pandora. Well, not te came. Creepy. It looks more realistic, which slides it into the Uncanny Valley, but Rocket is not humanoid. So it just makes it look more convincing. You don't have to worry about the Uncanny Valley with that, so it's brilliant, and it's certainly one of the most impressive animatronics I've ever seen. As much as I loved it, I really wish it had Yondu. I understand, I understand why he's not in it, but I still wish he was in it. That's my only critique. But I guess if you want to see Yondu, you can just go over across the street to the Jolly Holiday Cafe, where there's the little <laughs> statue of Mary Poppins on the carousel horse. <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all! This is a great damn ride. And I think anyone who refuses to see it just has their nostalgia goggles stapled on. Actually come here and ride it, and tell me you don't feel anything. You know, tell me you don't laugh, tell me you don't get a special thrill from it being even more intense. I mean, you might prefer Tower of Terror, but I think if you outright dismiss this, you have no idea what you're talking about. I think I think we have a real winner here. It's going to be a long time before I get tired of this ride. Now, like I said, we've gotten five out of six songs. The one we haven't gotten yet is I Want You Back. Wouldn't it be funny if that became like my white whale with this ride? Like, I got the first five on my first day here, but then through all of June, I'm just gonna keep coming back and coming back, hoping to get I Want You Back, and I never will. I hope I don't end up regretting saying that. <laughs> We are here with Morgan. We are in the overflow overflow queue. Just about to get into the normal overflow queue. It is interesting that in the little pre-show posters, which is all we've seen so far, the only guardian who wasn't captured was Mantis. And that's interesting because she's the one who like you think would be the most vulnerable, like the, the one who can't physically fight. I guess we'll see what happened there. Well, me and Dave have already seen I know, I know, no there, spoilers. But... Okay, okay. Spoiler alert. Everybody dies. Yep, eventually. Me and Dave have experienced all but I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. See, it's like this there's... is me 90s kid. When I think I yeah. Want You Back, I think Backstreet Boys. Right. I want you back. 
You Back. whipper snapper. I remember when we had real music performed by 11 year olds who were basically indentured servants. Yeah, kept in line with like a leather belt yeah. when that was acceptable. That won't lead to any long term ramifications. Of course not. Michael Jackson singing in a Disney attraction. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> ride this time, which I think is, is me and Dave's personal favorite. Mm -hmm. Morgan, what did you think? <laughs> it was just so much fun. The only quibble I'd have is that it felt very abbreviated. Like, I really wanted to see more of the story that was going on around us. And, uh... Well, well, part of the point is that you're, the gantry lift's going crazy, so you're just seeing little glimpses yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I understand. That it's just so it. good it yeah. leaves you wanting more. The rocket animatronic was really impressive. Spoilers, there's a rocket animatronic. <laughs> like, an actual physical one. Something yeah. even the movie this is based on doesn't have. It wasn't just Sean Gunn in a green suit up there. It, it was an actual... <laughs> it wasn't just a green tennis ball yeah. on pole. Tower was definitely a lot more segmented. Like, you've got the dread stuff, and then you, you go up, and you say, here's the thing, and uh, go up, here's another thing. And then it's just the drops. Here it's all going on at the same time, and that makes it more exciting, I think. Yeah, it's and, a very and, kinetic ride. And by the way, I gotta say, when we... Um, I know, that's that, that's redundant. That's my insight. Like, yeah. oh, it's kinetic, because yeah. you're moving. Well, you say all rides are kinetic, but then just in the next land, we've got Heimlich's choo-choo train <laughs> and bumper cars that don't bump. So yeah, <laughs> kineticism is very important, yeah. if that's even the right noun. Tower in Florida is actually physically segmented, where all the spooky Twilight Zone stuff happens. Then there's the middle segment we never got here, where you go forward into the fifth dimension, and then all the crazy droppy stuff happens. They could get rid of the segmentation here because it was all one shaft. They'd have to completely replot this ride if they wanted it to take over Tower in Florida. And I think part of the reason they didn't was because they knew that the kind of ride they wanted for Guardians just wouldn't be a fit for the infrastructure of that building. They were all about building suspense and dread, and in this case, you do have some suspense, but there's no real dread. Right. Like, but no one floats the idea that you're gonna die. We're never really implied to necessarily be in danger uh, throughout the ride. Yeah. Other Even than when Rocket starts tearing yeah. out the <laughs> the wiring and yeah. changing things around, and you start jerking around. Yeah, but anytime Rocket says it's foolproof, you've oh, gotta yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be a little wary. Yeah, it's true. Hit me with your best shot. We got Hit Me With Your Best Shot, uh, which Morgan got for the first time. A giant uh, cave troll-like monster is about to eat you, and then... For the tides, the sun, the sky. Hit Me With Your Best Shot played, and the third ride film happened during the solo of that. So I'm wondering if they specifically picked songs that had the solo at about the same point. Because a lot of pop songs do follow that exact same structure of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, maybe a bridge and or a solo, and then maybe a last verse and a final chorus. Since the last ride film was the most dialogue heavy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Our cast member friend Ian was very kind enough to give us this special collector's item, Mission Breakout Mixtape. It's a blank cassette. It's, it's a blank cassette. Good luck finding one of those these days. You know how long it is if it's 30 minutes, 60 um, minutes? I'm not entirely sure. They just said, here, have a nice little thing. Cast exclusive, right there. And it comes with this booklet it here. It comes with this little booklet with nice. uh, pictures and facts. You will never be able to get one of these unless you find it on eBay in a couple of years. This is just me being a nerd and finding connections where there probably are none. But if you arrange the songs alphabetically and the songs chronologically of when they were released, they line up perfectly except for I Want You Back. And I Want You Back is the one we haven't gotten. The Illuminati is trying to tell us something, I'm just not sure what. <laughs> See, I think they just closed Muppet Vision before they could turn the friggin' Frogs Gang! No! It's all the deep state, man. It's the deep state. They're coming for me. Help! When I took you from your home with terror, these boys, they wanted to eat you! They wanted to eat you up! They never tasted terror before! That's what Fred Trump said to his kid every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with your best shot! Come on! 
Well, we wrote it again and we got Hit Me With Your Best Shot again. Still awesome! Second time in a row. Let's try it again! Come on, take a free ride. Free ride. Okay, so we got Free Ride again. Uh, still haven't gotten I Want You Back. But I wanted to comment on this one in particular because there were two women sitting immediately behind us screaming bloody murder the whole time. It was like Beatlemania without the Beatles. It was it was Edgar Winter Mania, if that was what? a thing. What? 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 I can't, what? my ears are still ringing, literally. It was like the loudest I've ever heard a human being be, and they were right behind me. Their mouths were like mere feet from my delicate ears. You don't want to be a party pooper and say like they shouldn't scream right. like on a thrill ride. Right. But, but moderation, guys. Like, it's no, just... yeah. They screamed so loud that Ian turned into Brianna. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was the worst experience I've ever had on this ride. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good thing I've ridden it multiple times now, or so I don't have to judge that experience alone, because ye gods, that was painful. At the risk of going all George Costanza, we are living in a society. <laughs> we do not. There, you're, you're not. The ride's not just for you. There's other people with ears. <laughs> in, in a week or so, I might be able to process words again. Cut transmission. Born to be wild. All right, it is Tuesday, June 20th, uh, 2017. I'm at DCA. I'm going to try to get I Want You Back today, finally. And... Uh, I don't know how it happened, but I got here pretty early, and I am the first in line for fast passes. So here's where the fast pass line starts, and me is where it ends. See, when you're important enough to be first in line for fast passes, they give you your own security team. These guys are warding off any ne'er do wells who would dare try to harm my important visage. Okay, well we just rode uh, Mission Breakout three times in a row, basically. Only once with a fast pass because unfortunately, they very recently instituted a new rule, which was not a rule on Thursday, last time we were here. Every pass can only get one Mission Breakout fast pass per day. Which, uh, which sucks for me because I specifically got to the park super early to get as many fast passes as possible. But you know, I guess they gotta do what they gotta do. It's just disappointing for me. And the songs we got were Hit Me With Your Best Shot for a fourth time, um, Born To Be Wild for a second time, and Burn In Love for a second time. I Want You Back is still the white whale, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not waiting in that line again today, so I guess we'll try again on Sunday. I'm still not convinced that the Want You Back uh, version actually exists. <laughs> uh, Zach said he wrote it, but I think Zach is a no good liar and he's not here to defend himself, so I can say that. I'm not even sure Zach exists. I mean, are, have we gotten confirmation from that? Well, you notice you've never seen Zach and me in the same place at the same time, except for all those times you did. Right, so. right. But I'm going to keep trying, folks. I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up so easy, easy, easy. So here's what happened. Uh, I got to the park bright and early. I arrived at like 7 a.m. this morning. These guys Had were still getting ready because you know you're packing because you didn't do it last night. I Sorry. Guess. And as you see, they're all wearing VidCon t-shirts because uh, that's where we were going. That's where you were going. So uh, Dave texted me and said, "Hey, we probably won't make it by rope drop, but uh, go ahead and ride standby Guardians." Uh, while you wait, and uh, I did, and I got I Want You Back. Yay! So now I... am sorry. Now, now... You could have gotten it too. I wouldn't worry too much about it though, because the two film clips are literally just the first clip from Burn In Love, and the second clip from Give Up The Funk. That's an actual smile on my face right there. Alright, well we just got Burn In Love, and uh, it... it really stings around the nether regions, but anyway. Bird and Love might be my single favorite song of the six. I, 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 def, I love that hero shot at the beginning. It works for I Want You Back too, but it, it really works for Bird and Love. It is just so, so well done. 
this is the second time that I've really noticed the car fucking going wild during that big hero shot where they jump out of the cages. Like, yeah. everybody yes. in the car cheering for this video screen. That's the power that the energy and excitement level of this ride has. I really dug it. I, I like where Drex punched the monster in the face. <laughs> that was funny. It's a good Moana reference. When I initially rode this as Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, I only had one thought immediately after, and that was... Tower of Terror can burn in hell. Okay, maybe not actual it hell. Can burn and burn and burn, burn in hell. hell. Yeah. Maybe not actual hell, but maybe Mr. Toad hell. At the beginning of this vlog, you were terrified to go on Tower of Terror, and, and it, it like triggered some sort of anxiety issue for you. It, it always kind of has. The way they treated the ride system was more like a jump scare. And I do not like jump scares. Like anybody like coming up from behind me and just scaring the shit out of me, making a loud noise. Hit your brother in the head with a guitar I one. nearly hit my brother in the head with a guitar once, like chased after him with baseball bats, like everything. Like you don't and do you, that to me at startle. all. You do not startle me. I do not startle well. Don't do it. Well, I'm not startling you because you see me do it. So so, so how much Back of on uh, the bench. <laughs> Okay. So so how much Damn. of your improved enjoyment of this one. I'm trying to ask the man deep thought provoking okay. questions here. Well then do it. So how much of your uh, improved enjoyment of this one has to do with the fact that the suspense angle is taken out of it? That there's not that yeah, tension and build up. It's just let's cut straight to the action. Yeah, I love the fact that it's really more of an action oriented ride. The drop isn't so much a jump scare anymore. The drop is the punchline. So you see haters this is why they got rid of Tower of Terror for people like this. This is why. Why are they turning Tower into Guardians? What reason for it? This is the, the reason. The family right here, is together. Sir. We yes, grow exactly. this together every time now. Don't send him death threats. No, send him death threats. I'll block you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes our Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout vlog. It has been a tremendous time getting all this footage for you over these many weeks and months. And, um, <laughs> And now, the only way I can possibly end it, with all six Mission Breakout songs played at the same time. Enjoy! Yay! The new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, the new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, the new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, the new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror.